Hello, a good afternoon. Welcome to the fifth edition of Brothers in Cooperation Italy. I am Saren Sigaye, your host. Brothers in Cooperation is a program that shows you the Italian system. The Italian system is not something in specific, rather in this case, initiatives, sharing stories of cooperation, of working towards development by Italian people, corporations, organizations, towards contributing to development in Uganda. And today, we have two guests. I want to remind you, for those of you who were with us two weeks ago, we had the charge the affairs of the Italian embassy. And when I asked him what are the benefits of uh, supporting Uganda and investing a lot of money in Uganda, one of the things he hinted at were that they hope that they can get friendship, they can entice investment in Italy, but also get Italians to work in Uganda. Today we have a combination of all of that. We have culture, we have fashion, we have music. We have people who invest here from Italy. We have people who come here and work towards development, but we also have Ugandans who work in Italy, bring stuff from Italy. That are more when you stay with us. I would like to introduce you to our guests today. We have Pietro Averono, I hope I have succeeded in pronouncing it well, have yeah, I? Almost Welcome, perfect. almost. Thank you. I'm going to rehearse a lot. He is the personal assistant to the Italian ambassador. Yes. Thank you for joining us for this show. Thank you to you. We also have here, we have uh, Mr. Carmelo, I hope I've pronounced it well, they said Carmelo Cocuza, the director of Fin Africa. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm uh, very pleased to be here. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, I think I'll start with uh, Averono, Pietro. I'd like you to, to tell me how far, in your opinion, the Italian embassy, the Italian people have succeeded in working towards a cooperation where there is networking between Uganda and Italy in as far as investment is concerned. Yeah. The presence of um, Italian investors I in Uganda dates back the colonial days, during the colonial days. So uh, the Italians were already here when British were in Uganda. And in fact, some of the roads which were built those days, they were already with the cooperation of some Italians that were, of course, uh, under the, the directives of the Britons. Um, we started long ago. We started, I think, in 50-something. Uh, um, and now we are still here with, uh, with roads, uh, with bridges, with uh, um, dams. <laughs> Salini in Jinja is an example. And uh, I believe there is room for more cooperation, not only in infrastructures, but also in um, health as uh, part of our cooperation is, is dealing with. Uh, um, Makerere University, we have heard so, so many aspects of cooperation. Yeah, we've, uh, on these programs, we've been having guests here in the health arena. We've been having guests who support culture. We have people supporting universities, researchers. But this particular program, we are also interested in seeing the relationship between Ugandans who invest in Italy, but also initiatives by Italians to come and invest here. We've also seen initiatives by Italians without like support, but they, as individuals, go into development work, contributing towards development. And I would like to, to see the connection, what the embassy does to have those people work here, to have Ugandans go to invest in Italy. What's the role? How do you okay. intervene? We, we are just uh, intermediaries. Of course, we are trying to inform Italians about opportunities by Ugandans in, in a way or another to invest in Italy and the other way around, Italians to invest in Uganda. Of course, when we see bids on the newspapers and whatever, we immediately inform inform companies which are concerned with what the Uganda government or other structures here in Uganda wishes to have uh, with Italians, and on the other on the other way also. Unfortunately, the other way around, it is not yet a very a very strong uh, aspect. Though we are issuing so many visas to Ugandans who are going to Italy for a variety of of activities, works, generally it is not really something structured. There are individuals who prefer to find a way of life there, but in return they bring home money. So if you want, it's an investment, also the presence of Ugandans in Italy. 
Interesting. I'd like to invite an interview before we go to to Camero. I would like to invite Stefano's interview. It looks like maybe you educate me later that Italians who are here are mostly in fashion, in a bit of construction and restaurants. But I, I'd like to hear more. Can we have Stefano of the Mediterranean Mediterranean restaurant? Buonasera. Good evening, everyone. My name is Stefano Giannetti and I'm the owner of Mediterranean restaurant. I came to East Africa a few years ago, well, let's say a long time ago, and in Kenya, and I started there a restaurant. Then slowly, slowly, I've been, we have been moving to Uganda uh, for the reason that we believe Uganda is a very a fast-growing country. I started with a small uh, fast food in a shopping center here in Kampala and I was really satisfied about the result that is why I decided to make a nice restaurant and it has been extremely successful. As Italia we love to bring around the world our culture and our food which is highly appreciated and I'm surprised how much Uganda they really love our food you know I could not imagine so much happiness when I started this such a nice restaurant with our food. Because who doesn't know Italian food like pizza and pasta? Everybody knows, everybody heard of it. But Italian food is not only that. You know, we have a very, very old cuisine. You know, we, we have so many dishes that people love to learn from us, you know. That is why I do believe that in the future we will really establish a very good relation with Uganda and Italy. And I do strongly believe that our relationship between Italy and uh, Uganda will go ahead, will grow bigger and bigger. That a lot of other traders and businessmen will be attracted from, for Uganda and we will keep growing together. Who doesn't know about Italian food anyway? This time, and I'm not hungry, but just seeing that food has made me hungry. And a verano, Pietro, let me tell you, I'll never forgive myself for missing the lunch that I missed at your place. I was looking for. I have to come for it again another time, because who doesn't know Italian food? Um, Camero. Yes. I pronounced it well. Yes, you did. It's taken a lot of rehearsing. <laughs> I'd like you to tell me, what is Fin Africa? Fin Africa is an entrepreneurship center whereby we provide uh, young entrepreneurs, people who are setting up businesses with the skills to set up the businesses, the infrastructure in terms of office. Maybe I can just show you a physical I'm happy diagram. To, to see that, yeah. the, it, it is an entrepreneurship center whereby there's an office incubation for people who are setting up an office and then you know in the first few months of operations you are having trouble setting up the establishing your office space then you can actually come for business skills training where you can actually learn about how to implement your business how to devise a business plan how to do a financial projection for your business so that you can prepare your businesses for future implementation and then you can come to us for the advisory or mentorship services as we call them whereby you can actually get somebody to tutor you and develop your business with you and actually be your advisor in setting up the businesses and giving you guidance on the establishment of your business. So is it a consultancy firm where you advise people on how to invest and run their businesses? or It is a mix. I, I call it uh, a hand-holding service. Um, if you're setting up a business, you face a lot of uncertainties, um, notably in the sense that you don't have uh, uh, capital. You're looking for infrastructure. You're looking for an office. You're looking to devise your business plan. So the idea was be uh, essentially to have a, uh, one center where all of these can be incorporated and have a hand-holding device whereby you can set up the business without uh, making mistakes, without going astray and keeping you on track into developing your business uh, in, in a sustainable way. I see enterprise development, so who qualifies, it's particularly people who are entrepreneurs? Exactly. I mean, as you know, business failure amongst young entrepreneurs is very, very high. We are talking to the rate of about 60% of businesses setting up uh, uh, within the first few years they fail 
and they don't have guidance and they don't have enough capital. So the idea is to give them the possibility to be able to nurture their business and empowering them with some skills in order to develop their business and to guide them through uh, the, the sustainability process whereby they can become sustainable in the long run. Okay. Um, how long has this, uh, has this service or center been there? We opened up in 2010. Uh, it is now one and a half or coming up to two years. Is it something that people have, uh, have tapped into, have used? Y yeah. Uh, everybody knows Enterprise Uganda. It is it's the well-known establishment here. But they don't know that after the business plan, after doing the training, you actually need to start um, complementing the skills training with infrastructure. You need to have an office. You need to have advisory services. So we actually assist the entrepreneur in going the next step further and achieving all the right steps to make sure that the, the business becomes sustainable. So we provide an office, we provide mentorship, we provide IT training if they need a website, accountancy services. So all these complementary businesses are all gathered together to sustain the businesses that we are trying to create. Okay, I need to be educated. When you <laughs> say you provide an office, do mm -hmm. you give people office space? Do you give people money to go and get their own office and to have internet facilities? Exactly how, how does this happen? Uh, well, the idea is to have uh, an office cubicle whereby you have your desk, you have your computer, internet is already available, and to have uh, the office infrastructure in terms of a secretary, a receptionist, uh, photocopying, faxing, administration for your business, so that all of that is incorporated into one single payment that you don't have to forego uh, if you're setting up an office elsewhere where you buy, you would have to buy office infrastructure, you would have to buy desks, computers, everything is already provided in that unit. So someone comes to your office space, how mm -hmm. big is your space? Well, it is a space of a desk with some computers. I think you see it in this picture here. The, there's uh, enough space for you to set up, uh, to start setting up uh, the administration part of your business. So to be able to facilitate you to do the accounts and do the administration side of that. So someone actually has to pay a certain fee to come. Exactly, uh, there, there is a fee involved. You, do, you don't want to talk about the fee or you want to talk about it? There, there's six, uh, 690,000 shillings for one month rental which incorporates all the infrastructure, the access to internet, electricity, telephone, and a, a possibility to have use of a secretary and receptionist for photocopying of, and printing. The facilities. thing about Ugandan business and the people who might need that kind of service are sometimes, mm -hmm. w especially when you talk about enterprise, enterprise in Uganda could be people who are in carpentry, people mm -hmm. who, are, who are doing the, this mm -hmm. small kind of scale yeah. or developing small kind of scale industries. Mm -hmm. How do th those people get the kind of connection to find out about a setup like yours, which might not be actually mm -hmm. located in the localities of these people? Right. How do you get in touch with them and how do they know where to find you? Well, we do organize a lot of workshops. We will we'll work a lot with the community-based organizations whereby the, the general, g the gist to attract people is to have entrepreneurship workshop it's very similar to enterprise Uganda you start talking to them about the qualities and the skills you need to have in order to establish your business so we start telling them that you need to have certain skills to manage your accounts properly to be able to keep your profits and not to diversify and move your profits away from the business so that all the skills um, slowly by slowly will actually nurture the business of, uh, of these entrepreneurs to make sure that uh, the businesses can become sustainable and that in the long run uh, they have enough financing to be able to, to grow their businesses. Before I come back to Camero, I would like to invite an interview from Edward Sempa, who is one of the beneficiaries of this, and maybe we'll get a clear insight into what the project is about. Can I please, studio, have an interview of Edward? My name is Edward Sempa. Um, I was born in Uganda and at the age of 22, I think, I moved to Italy to study fashion and production and I spent four years in Milan learning about pattern cutting production and from there I decided to move back to Uganda and uh, set up a factory to produce garments. Uh, when I moved to Uganda, I met Carmelo who has an uh, entrepreneurship uh, co company called Fin Africa, where he works with entrepreneurs, startups in U Uganda, where he helps them, mentors them, 
and with him I'm sort of working to structure my company. Well, I went to Italy because it's the best place to learn about manufacturing, uh, especially for clothes, but also other crafts, but for fashion it's the best in terms of bags, sunglasses, shoes, they have the technical knowledge, the know-how, so that's why I went to Italy. I think in the future I hope to be able to collaborate with artisans from Italy, perhaps maybe getting uh, artisans to come over to Uganda and teach young people how to, make, how to make a shoe by hand, how to make a tie, how to make a belt by hand. I think these are the exchanges one can have because when I went there I learned skills I probably couldn't learn in England or Sweden. So I think that's the exchange we could have. Oh, um, <laughs> interesting interview. But I see that already he's looking a lot at, uh, at Italy. Uh -huh. I want to ask a quick one before we go for a break. Sure. I would just like to know how you came into Uganda. Were you invited by the embassy? How did you think <laughs> of all places to come and start, start up that kind of setup in Uganda? Mm -hmm. uh, I was the regional representative of the European Investment Bank based in Nairobi. So I was covering the region. And we, we had a lot of, of credit facility for SMEs through the local commercial banks. And what we realized, a lot of the, the SMEs that were applying for funding didn't have appropriate business plans. So I found myself in a position where a lot of them were asking me to give advice, how to write a good business plan, how to make a business sustainable, how to assess their financing. And I suddenly realized that there is actually room, plenty of room here in Uganda where people can actually take heed of that advice and set up businesses which are financially sustainable. So I decided to move away from the banking sector to develop this new entrepreneurship side of um, businesses and make sure that they have all the right skills and empowering them with appropriate, because I find Ugandans are very, very, uh, have a lot of high, high, uh, high ideas, they have good, good quality projects. It's just a matter of implementing them. They don't have the business skills or the management skills sometimes to take them to the next level. So the idea is now to set up a, an entrepreneurship center that can give them that kind of infrastructure and that kind of advice and consulting services where can they can proceed to the next level. I'm glad to hear that uh, you were in Nairobi and you decided to, to come to Uganda and set it up in Uganda. You were based, the office was in Nairobi? It was based in Nairobi. You were a region, so that says something about Uganda. And I always thought that our problem is capital. Seems that it's beyond capital. We know we have these great ideas, but the implementation, we'll hear more of that. And mm -hmm. we also have very interesting guests in the studios, but it will be a surprise. So when we get back after the break, we will talk about fashion still, we'll talk about investment, entrepreneurship, but we'll also talk about food and culture. Welcome back from the break. Before the break, we had Kamel, and he was telling us about Finn Africa. If you want to know how to start a business, you can find him at Wuma Grounds, Wuma Show Grounds, Finn Africa. You get all these ideas, training, practical skills, and you will have office space. If I say more than that, it becomes an advert, so I'll stop there. <laughs> and I'll come back and uh, welcome our guests. We have Samona Skiava. Yes. I'm glad I pronounced it well. I should go and start learning you should. Italian. <laughs> Italian <yes. laughs> she is the chief executive officer of Africa on stage. Exactly. I'd like to, to understand what Africa on stage is, but before that, I would also like to introduce Salvador. Mm -hmm. Many of you relate Sa uh, know Salvador, so he's not a man who needs introduction. We'll be hearing more about Salvador. First, before we went to the break, we were talking about Italian... Um, products, what they bring here, and uh, it was interesting to hear that, uh, for instance, Camelo left a high-paying job, mm -hmm. and he decided to come and invest here, and I would like to know the role that, for instance, the Italian corporation and the Italian embassy has, how you support such people like uh, Camelo who come to do such initiatives, leave everything that they have and start from scratch in a country that's not theirs. That is more mm, something that comes out of some someone's feeling you know because okay the embassy has got an approach which is general not necessarily you could go into details at times people were we, which are operating in particular fields understand better where to go than us that we have got a, maybe a general view uh, we have uh, however um, as an embassy mm, 
convinced people that certain Italian products are particularly good in terms of fashion, in terms of food, or in terms also of materials. For example, here in Uganda, we've got companies who are importing tiles for, for construction. Even uh, certain good quality cement, it is imported from Italy. In the food, for example, we have got now in the Ugandan supermarkets products like the chocolate called Nutella, which is mm. very famous in the world. And uh, really people are really uh, attracted by that. But we have got olive oil. It was impossible to get those products five years ago. Or vinegar or pasta, you know, macaroni, spaghetti, all these kind of things. Now you go in almost all supermarkets in Kampala and Jinja, imagine, and Masaka Mbarara, whatever, you can get those products. So that is the work that was done over 10, 12 years ago. For example, Made in Italy started to import, I believe, 1997 or 1998. So it is already 13, 14 years. And uh, they are, uh, now I don't recall the name, but there is a gentleman that is importing uh, fashion uh, clothes from Italy. By the way, particularly high quality. Um, I've forgotten the name. I have to, <laughs> to try. Uh, Winner Classic? Yeah, Winner Classic. Good, good. Thank you, thank you. And then we've got also Italian companies that have decided to come here and to not only import, but also to fix at times these styles. Though Yuma, for example, is a Ugandan company that is importing these styles. Then we've got other companies like Salini that do huge, gigantic jobs. So uh, it is. Uh, it is uh, you know a variety of activities for example we've got an italian that is called salati and uh, is roasting coffee and uh, this coffee is also sold here in uganda but is, it is also going to japan for example so from uganda from to uganda japan? to japan Very yes well. yeah and uh, he's, he's a gentleman that he has done a particular uh, study has selected products and uh, he has decided to do something that is highly qualitative and uh, people with a certain love for coffee particular taste do uh, love to buy such a products oh that coffee guy should pay our kalango mm -hmm. advert <laughs> you've just advertised <laughs> ah, <yes. laughs> i'd like to come back to to, to samana yes. is it anything to do with the italian what brings you to uganda and how do you end up with a project like africa on stage in Uganda, of all African places. Okay, I came to Uganda almost seven years ago. It was a family decision because my husband is a medical doctor. He is a pediatrician, mm -hmm. and he chose uh, for uh, his business, his profession, to come here, where he can really be very helpful. Mm. So the family decided to follow, and uh, we quit what uh, we were doing in uh, Milan, in Italy, and we ended up here in Kampala. Okay. And uh, all the family tried to do its best to settle and to make, uh, you know, a beautiful experience out of, uh, of, of it. So I started by uh, helping some friends opening a restaurant that is Cayenne, where I'm actually working as marketing manager. And a few weeks ago, uh, this idea of opening an agency labels, uh, promoting and managing Ugandan artists, artists in general, I would say, came up. It was not completely my idea, actually. Uh, the artist I uh, came across uh, during this period of two years while I was working at Cayenne, they uh, had a way to appreciate me uh, while I was working there. And uh, they asked me, but why don't you help us uh, with your know-how uh, to, to, to improve and to do something unique? And uh, I said, you know what, why not? <laughs> Wow. And, uh, and so we started. Have you ever been done anything to do with culture, like to, to be able to market? Do you understand what the challenges in culture, especially in a country that doesn't have infrastructure like here? Well, it is a challenge, as you say, but uh, I think when you have the know-how, it can be uh, applied to any kind of product, let's say. The know-how so here being? Exactly. Know-how here being like uh, marketing tools. Okay. So how to label, how to prepare, uh, not only a product, but in this case persons, that is more or less the same, because you have to market, to advertise them, to look after their image, and especially the philosophy of African on stage will be to uh, be very careful of what uh, uh, the artists belonging to the label are delivery as a message. Because, you know, artists, uh, they become icons. 
uh, especially young people, they identify with these artists and sometimes they are not even aware of uh, the importance of the message they deliver when they are singing, where they are up on the stage doing a comedy and uh, these kind of things. So I'd like very much to uh, to, to, to improve uh, with a little bit more of quality, let's say, this, uh, I'd this like process. To, I'd like to associate with that, in especially as far as the message that musicians and all creative industry people are putting across. There was this young lady, she's a musician, I won't say her name. She doesn't know <laughs> how much uh, energy she wields in terms of influencing minds and she says she doesn't want to leave her husband who built a flat yeah. uh, even if he's cheating on her in the era of yeah. AIDS and she's sending a message to young people that if exactly. your husband is rich don't leave him however much he's cheating on you that yeah. means that you don't know how much as an artist you tap on people's minds so how do you intend to to go a step and and sort of like inspire these artists to understand their role yeah well from my own experience i can say that you know i've worked very hard all of my life and i know if you really want to achieve something if you have a dream you will make it but also you have to be careful uh, uh, towards the road you are going Sometimes maybe it could take a little bit longer, but if you take the right steps and especially looking after quality, you will get there. So I will try to inspire them and the mood that is inside the, uh, this family that we are, we are just creating now is really excellent. They are all very excited and uh, I think you can have a taste of uh, this when we are launching Africa on stage officially the 1st of December at Cayenne, that is my home. Uh -huh. uh, where all our artists are going to perform live. This is another step forward in quality. Artists? There are quite uh, a number because we have uh, Salvador, of course, that is going to be our MC for excellence. We, ha we have uh, Cindy that is coming. We are unveiling her with her new image after the pregnancy wow. and her beautiful baby. Wow. We have Rachel Kay, who is uh, unfortunately about to leave Uganda because she's on and off. She's very much international. She's got some project in Los Angeles. Wow. So she will be traveling up and down, but we'll be, we will be very in touch with her. Also with some international programs. That's very good link. Yeah. We have uh, uh, also some upcoming artists like the Gen Z band and uh, Prince J that is an amazing artist uh, dealing with hip hop and rap and his very his messages are very strong towards young people and is very socially involved and then we also give space to uh, very young and willing talented people who are completely unknown but uh, for from our point of view they are uh, really quality stuff quality people and we want really to push them that is the spirit. We'll <laughs> come back and hear more about that. But I would also like to go to Salvador. Salvador, are you one of the artists who approached Simona for that? Yeah, I, I am actually. Um, <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> 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 it's all your fault we are here. I, I think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, you know, when, whenever you think of an Italian person, mm. the first things that, that come to mind are food, mm -hmm. fashion, and soccer. Mm -hmm. Those are the first things that comes to your mind. But mm. Um, I met Simona one time I was doing a show at Cayenne and then um, we became friends of mm. course just like every other person but uh, when she we were talking one time during one of those meetings with other people and she was like she put me aside and she was like by the way do you know I can be your manager really? so I've, I've, I've always wanted a manager but I wanted to hear what what made us so, what made us so special so she was like do you know uh, can I be your manager I was like yeah I'm looking for a manager actually so she was like, no, 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 you're not understanding. Can I be your manager? So, because the idea of manager in Uganda is, oh, somebody is going to look for you a gig and put you there and then he gets his percentage, he goes home. Mm. But the principles, the idea she laid down for me, I was mesmerized because her vision, her vision before even the African state thing, her vision for her being my manager were so clear in that I was, perplexed i was just amazed throw some hints yeah uh, she talked of making me a star and now, you want to be Uganda, a star when, 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 <laughs> when, when you Salvador, you're already <laughs> a star that is exactly what i thought i was oh. but when she explained <laughs> what kind of star she wanted me to be hmm. i was shocked who is that kind of star she was like i want you to be that person when you go in a place everybody's like wow i want to be like him not because of the money, not because of the talent, but because of your principles, the way you live your life. The way that. she laid that down, I was like, okay, wow. One of the best examples she gave was like, 
you know, Salvador, right now you're like an inspiration to kids. Why don't you start out something? I can talk to the, to the embassy, whereby you can go to a school and you teach people how, how you came up, mm. give them your life experiences. Good. And I'm like, okay, that is something that I have never thought of doing. All my life I've been thinking, okay, Salvador, you start. You go on stage, after you perform, you get your check, go home and rest. I never thought I would, I would be more helpful, more useful to the community than, than that, than what I thought. So I love the idea. Did you just hear that? <laughs> Bebe Cool, if you're tuning in, and Bobby Wine, don't blame me because it all came from your camps. But I remember hearing Bebe Cool saying he cannot let his son go to Bobby Wine's place because his son will then see Bobby Wine smoking the pipe. I don't know if it has hit Bebe Cool, Bobby Wine, and all those people that there is more than their sons who are actually being inspired by their actions. And what Simona was telling him is that these people should not want to be like you simply because you are popular and you have a huge car and you're splashing money and have many beautiful girls looking at you, but also the role you're playing in society. There's a filmmaker, George Stoney, who said that films should do, a filmmaker should do, not doing music for the sake. Yes, you can entertain, but also who are you and what are you contributing to your society? Eli Wamala and their class belong to that inspiration. Isn't it strange that it is taking an Italian to try to tell some of these people back to line. Tell me, in an industry like Uganda, yeah. what other challenges have you found not having a marketing person or a manager or role models who are inspiring you and towing you in line? That is, that is a very good question. You see, you just look like, I'm not, I'm not being biased, I'm not being uh, pointy, but look at all our artists. I've not seen an artist who has inspired me, actually. Besides the music, their life, as in, I've, I've not grown up saying, I, when I grow up, I want to be like so-and-so. When never you grow up, you don't want to become like Moses Mato? He has run um, a band for over 40 years. Uh, unfortunately, his is. genre is not, is not the kind of music I follow. Good, so good. unfortunately, <laughs> so the people I would love to follow are not living the, the life that I want them to. An inspiring life. That is so unfortunate. So for Simona to come up with this talent, you know, the vision of African stage is the only thing that made me get so much interested and to cancel some of my, my, the things I was doing just because we, had, we set dates for meetings. Mm -hmm. I had to cancel some of the things I was doing because I really want this to work. I really want to be part of it 100% because the vision behind the African stage is so clear and so well laid out. And of course, the brains behind it are doing a great job, of course, because <laughs> you can look at the work she's done at Cayenne and you can, it can tell for itself. You're smiling and <laughs> doing a lot of advertisement for <laughs> Cayenne. Yeah. Oh. I feel like flying to Cayenne, but um, I want you to know, Simona, okay, I would like you to share the vision yes. a little more broader because what is happening, I'm also a culture person and culture people in the sector. We are debating about possibilities of, adv of inviting or attracting people from different sectors, marketeers, uh, bankers, people from the different sectors to kind of intervene because what is happening in art, there is huge potential yes. in terms of talent. Yes. But how we develop that, how we market that, how we package ourselves, how we present proposals is a problem. How can other people who are not musicians, who are not Salvador, who don't have a link to you, come to you or to other people and have a... What is this vision and how can people be a part of it? You know, as long as you're very committed and you're passionate about what you do and you're talented, I think there is space for everybody, especially young people. We want really to inspire young people to uh, keep on pursuing their dreams. And too specific to certain genres? Uh, not really, because of course, you know, the music, of course, is what is attracting many, many people. But here we have got a, an example of uh, a comedian that is, uh, okay, he's also singing, he's got a beautiful <laughs> voice, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't be so close. Let's say we've got like painters or writers, uh, whoever can be part, because Africans or stage is not just singers on stage. It's just people who are passionate about what they are doing and they want to show other people what they can do with their heart. Sounds like an ambitious project based in Uganda. Most of the people I've had are Ugandans and you're saying African. Yes. Who are the other Africans? Oh, they're all welcome because, you know, uh, I don't want to be like so specific, but all the people who can connect with us 
uh, they can relate to us, they can show their talent and their initiatives, they're very welcome. It doesn't matter where they come from. Why? No, you also plan to, to have, because the other problem that seems to be happening in Africa yes. is that we relate a lot with the West. If you're Ugandan, usually you relate with Britain, mm -hmm. and then there's no interconnectedness in as far as Africans are concerned, yes. like Cameroon, Burkina Faso, West Africa, South Africa, and then there's this issue of West Africa, East right. Africa, those yes. are French, we are English speaking, and we don't tap on those markets and yeah. experiences. But you see, it's like for me, you know, I came here, I told you, almost seven years ago. Now, it's like uh, when I talk to you, I don't see the color of your skin. I just see a person, and that should be for art. I mean, art is the common point. So no matter where you're coming from, if we have a common aim, we should work together. Mm. And uh, what is this uh, Africa on stage going to play in as far as, don't you think for now or in future, yeah. it is important that Africa on stage has other Africans networking with other Africans before we even look at elsewhere outside Absolutely, Africa? absolutely, because uh, uh, it's important to uh, make the rest of the world aware of the talent we have here before spending so much money and importing other talents from uh, abroad. My effort will be uh, to do the opposite, to push these people outside the, the country and overseas possibly. Interesting. So tell me yes. about this pro when you're launching. Yes, the 1st of December. The 1st of December. 1st of December is going to be the official launch. Mm -hmm. And you know, as uh, when you have a newborn baby, you mm -hmm. want to throw a party to, m to say that you're so happy and everything. So what uh, uh, we decided with the rest of the team to throw this party, to look for sponsors, to make the entrance free. So you come at Cayenne the 1st of December from 7 o'clock. You don't spend money on the entrance because want, uh, we want the people to come in, join, to spend money, maybe, you know, having a drink or a bite, whatever, and to enjoy our performances. Actually, their performances. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> it is all your performance. <laughs> <laughs> and when you talk about their performance, because I'm also interested in, in, in the launch, because yes. um, I'm looking at a possibility where more culture practitioners yes. come to get access yes. to this, yes. because like I already said, the need for, for other professionals to exactly. come into the industry yes. is yes. like, it should have been like yesterday. Yes. But I'm also worried when it is free and people can come in free for as long as they have drinks. How are you going to deal with the congestion? Which kind of person do you want to see there? We want to see uh, people inter interested in uh, art, basically, and in uh, this uh, project that, uh, that we are launching. Um, I think that uh, we just want to have fun and we want to, have to give people an idea of what we are able to do to inspire other people and maybe to create even more connection uh, with other people that could come on board later next, next year. I also noticed you're calling it a family. Yes. But there are also competitors, one or the other. How are you going to deal with that <laughs> internally? That is, that is exactly why we call it a family, because we don't look at it as competition. We look at it as promoting different ideas yeah. through different talents. We have music, we have a comedian, we have a band. So once we integrate, because we are going to do that, we are going to integrate as one and put up a performance as one group to show that we are a family. The competition beat is different because she has the money, she will give us the money. We see the <laughs> theoretician. <laughs> <laughs> the theoretician is not stopping at being theoretical. <laughs> we'll see it in practice. He's also campaigning for money and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Those are good tips for me to take. Averano, I'm coming back to you. Okay. The Italian embassy yeah. used to be so supportive mm -hmm. of culture. Mm -hmm. What happened? No, they're still there. Hey, you still do? Still I no longer there. see you supporting the museums, supporting culture initiatives. And I'm like, where did the Italian embassy go? Hey. Uh -huh. No, the Italian embassy is still there. Of course, uh, we had uh, high moments like 2006 when we were celebrating the centenary of the Ruenzori. And I'm really pleased to see that Monitor a few days ago still used pictures uh, which were which were taken um, long ago. Wow. And I've got a newspaper here of 2006. Here yeah, there's uh, the same picture that is reproduced onto the Monitor of few days ago yeah. which uh, date is this do they yeah, give credit of november no i yeah they give credit and uh, what i want to say is this this was a particularly high moment and we had a lot to do mm. uh, then there are moments they are going a little bit down but apparently there is something nice that is coming out uh, at the end of the year something to do with pinocchio it's a story whatever 
and then uh, we've, we've been also promoting our language, of course, uh, through Makerere, we've, uh, we've had courses there. And, uh, you know, our culture is, um, is also something else. Our food is culture, our dressing is culture, our style is culture, and even our tiles is culture. <laughs> <laughs> the tiles that are in at Sheraton, example, mm. or other things that we are using in our daily life. So now the culture maybe that you are mentioning, um, uh, like what? Like the support films, to culture. Uh, supporting culture yeah, in Uganda. Yeah, because uh, we used to a great deal rely on a lot of support from particularly the, I know that around 2000, 1999, the Italian embassy was very supportive of culture. Yes, depends also on the way, in the nature example of the ambassadors. There are ambassadors that they are more on business, let's say. Other ambassadors, they are more on culture. Depends also on their feelings. So at times, at times you have to do things without money because often the budgets are so small. So you have to use your inventive. You have to try to uh, mobilize people, resources, uh, interest into local people, into Italian people that have got a particular love for Uganda, so they come here, even here, at times without gaining any single coin, but they can bring here concerts, they can do something that could be a good exchange with the reality of Uganda, mm. the, the, the culture of Uganda, yes. Tell me about these 2006 celebrations, because when you're saying it, it was with a lot of, rem the mm -hmm. reminiscing was filled mm. with emotion, but good, positive yeah. emotion. I, I happen to be the chairman, the the chairman of the committee that organized this celebration. So we had the people coming from Italy and, uh, for example, r um, relatives of the Duke of Abruzzi who climbed this mountain in 2006. We had universities who came here, for example, the University of Milan, the University of Brescia, the University of Turin. The University of Brescia brought here on the mountains, on the Rubenzori, and they are still there, some um, uh, what are called stations measuring temperature, measuring um, the, the, the waterfall and other uh, hydrometric elements, you know, maybe is the wrong word, but they are still there today and they are still monitoring what is happening in Uganda. So that cultural aspect brought in also technology and other aspects of which, which is of great utility to, uh, to Uganda. Uh, I would like to, to borrow on a moment yes, during please. those celebrations. So I'd like to request studio to, to, to throw an interview, an excerpt from the footage that was covered during the, the celebrations. Studio, please. All right, um, maybe before we get that, can I request for, for an interview from the Italian lady who took this personal initiative to run an orphanage? I'm I work uh, as, a res as a manager of the Italian restaurant in Bugolobe, Kampala. And the restaurant is uh, called Italia, it is in the same company of the uh, company who export uh, Italian products in Uganda, in all Uganda, and uh, the name is uh, Tomao. I work here, it's not a long time, because uh, I start uh, my experience in Uganda as a volunteer for one uh, international NGO and then a local NGO. After that, I, uh, I decided with another two Ugandan guys to start uh, our own organization. Then uh, we, we build uh, one house and that uh, start to be one orphanage for total orphan children from all Uganda. Then I decided to stop to go up and down between Uganda and Italy and uh, I tried to find a way for uh, remaining here in Uganda. What I'm trying to do is uh, work, continue to work uh, in, in the restaurant, in a beautiful place uh, here in Uganda. In the same time, continue to take care of the children that I took with me two years and a half ago. When I was growing up, uh, I had this friend of mine. She would really go out of her way to do things sometimes at our expenses, friends. She's, she's given 
to friends who do not have without asking, but she's given away your grab. If you're in boarding school, you can relate with how sometimes I would get angry. This is sometimes martyrdom complex, but it is so touching to see someone who gets from what she gets from, say, working in the restaurant and going to mobilize her personal, like using her personal resources, going to Italy, mobilizing friends to give her money to come here and start an organization, a charity, an orphanage. She's not been given money from elsewhere. It is her personal initiative. Relating with Ugandans, it's not like blood. So. I really appreciate that spirit and that is the spirit of brothers in cooperation. It could be women, it could be men, but the spirit of cooperation. So when we come back after the break, we'll hear more about fashion, we'll also talk about culture and uh, I'll have more questions for Averano about support to culture. And tourism. And tourism, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, when we were in the break and there was WBS where Quality Matters, Simona was like, exactly where Quality Matters. <laughs> and I remembered hearing Italians saying quality. And I also remembered when we were talking about fashion, how, how sometimes the Italians are so specific uh, when it comes to fashion. If you're going to import or have a shop that is, sh that is um, selling Italian clothes, then quality is so so important and uh, I would like before we we go much further to call to invite studio to run a bit of an interview with some of the guys who go from here to Italy to to do business and then we will hear is it quality is it money is it being aggressive is it friendship or the food my name is Elvin Isiko I'm the operations manager at Winner Classic Uganda. I'll take you through the brief history of the company. The company was founded in 16th February 1989. Started as one branch along Kampala Road, which was relatively small, but it grew slowly, and the growth was due to the due to the trust between the designers and the brands that supply us with the merchandise that we sell. Through this relationship of trust and understanding of each other's needs, we're able to build the company slowly to what it is today. And what Winner Classic brings to Uganda is high-end luxury brands, for example, Giorgio Armani, Salvatore Ferragamo, Moreschi, Maori. The friendship between Italy and Winner Classic is through the designer brands. The general public would ask, why Italy? Why not, why not Asia? The reason for Italy is because of the Italian art. Italians are known for the exquisite testing materials, the workmanship, and also the advanced technology in terms of research, in terms of development of the best materials and workmanship in the world. And the Ugandan customers appreciate the quality of the, Italian, of the Italians. That's why Winner Classic has continued to bring goods from Italy and even source materials from Italy which the Ugandan market appreciates. No wonder I, I, I could see Salvador. <laughs> Simona you really need to get to make this gentleman not only exemplary but also rich because those clothes there they are quite expensive and I saw he wanted to get inside <laughs> the screen and grab some of those clothes and that is what they yeah. say they mean when they say quality. Mm. And uh, if you want to, to get those quality products, I am not chasing away people, but you have to go when you are a bit loaded. <laughs> I want to thank Santa because Santa introduced us to, to, to Winner Classic. I knew Winner Classic, yeah, but Santa is not one of those spirits who are competitive. And talking about that, by the way, I'd like to thank her for dressing me up. I look mm. so beautiful, so I'm told, but that is because I'm wearing Arapapa. That is the rainbow, and she made me beautiful. And the jewelry, you want to be beautiful, or you want to this rich clothes, you have to go to um, Nakumat, first floor, Arapapa, and Santa will dress you. Those beautiful ladies you see modeling there, uh, wearing Santa's clothes, Arapapa models. I want to, to come back as we continue to talk about fashion. 
to come back to <laughs> to you, Averano. I, yes. I forgot Averano. Pietro Averono, yes. Pietro. Yes. Oh my God, so I'm rehearsing, I need. Yeah. yeah. I didn't tell you how handsome you look, did I? Oh, no, you didn't. And very ah. smart. <laughs> I, would, I would have collapsed <laughs> if oh, you had said that before. Don't, mm. don't. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank so, you. tell me about uh, fashion, Italy, because um, everybody seems to be saying Italy fashion. How far has your industry gone in terms of creating employment, in terms of, of uh, mentoring other designers? Because when, when we were talking to Santa, she was saying that um, they are inspired by Milan. Yeah. You, you have to do design, you have to do fashion, you're inspired by Milan. How is the Italian corporation doing in, in a sense of bringing that inspiration and, and that sense of business in Uganda? Again, that is a sector that is uh, much more into the hands of the individuals and the companies that they know that the Italian fashion is, is peculiar, is wonderful. Uh, I do remember that the daughter of uh, the owner of Winner Classic, now I don't recall his name, but the daughter went to Milan to do a course in order to learn how to design, how to capture what this peculiarity of the Italian style is. Then she moved in London, she went up and down. So just to tell you, uh, even the other gentlemen with Africa say they came to Italy because of this and that. So th this peculiarity of Italy it is used in all fields, as I was saying before. It could be dressing, it could be food, it could be structures, what it could be cars also. Now Fiat bought Chrysler. Can you imagine? This Chrysler is gigantic, not completely, but a, a huge portion of, uh, of uh, Chrysler now belongs to Fiat. It seems that Italy I is down in terms of economics and it's got problems, but at the end of the day, this peculiarity of Italy uh, is always coming out. Uganda with Italy marries so well, I've noticed this in the course of years, uh, even uh, because I do not know, we've got a, a something in common. We are different tribes on the same land, we've got different languages, we have to try to uh, you know, adjust our differences among each other, so that uh, you know, gives to us a certain ability to see the other person, and out of that, maybe we get some quality uh, of life, which is also reflected in the way we want to appear, in the way we want our stomach to be. Uh, I came to Uganda some time back, and I remember that Uganda could wear second-hand clothes, but you could go around Kampala, and everybody could wear something different from one another. I could go to Nairobi, and the local industry had already gone ahead vis-a-vis -vis Uganda, and people were dressed more the same way. You could see the same pair of trousers, the same jacket, the same shirts. So Ugandans have, have got a, a, a love for style, which is similar to the feeling that Italians have. I love what you're saying. I'm not bragging, but mm. uh, I know that people come from London or the US, and they think they are going to, s to show us fashion. Ugandans who are there, <laughs> they are surprised, because yeah. they find us just there, mm. if not past mm. where mm. they are. Mm. Mm. Um, it's unfortunate because we expected Santa, but she's in a retreat. She said something to the effect that you want to be a fashion designer, internationally respected. <coughs> you can go to New York where she's been, you can go to Paris where she's been, but you're not yet until you've gone to Milan. Can I have an interview of Santa, please? I must commend uh, the Italian Embassy and, of course, the Brothers in Cooperation for your efforts in, uh, and your interest, especially in working with artists such as myself, you know, in Uganda that uh, have a lot of potential. I do hope that this, you know, relationship will continue, that we will collaborate and that, you know, through our collaboration, we are able to build big, you know, Ugandan fashion brands that can be able to probably, you know, work together with uh, major Italian fashion brands such as, you know, Salvatore Ferragamo, Giorgio Armani, Gucci, mention it. We have the potential. What we need is the experience and the intercultural exchange between Italy and, and Uganda to actually, you know, make it to the next level. Uh, we have been able to showcase in Paris. We've showcased all over the world as Ara Papa and as myself, but we do have an agent right now in Milan, and we do hope that very soon we will be able to meet, you know, all our counterparts in, in the city of uh, Milano in Italy. 
Simona was just telling me that you're working in Milan and you could as well be on a catwalk because fashion is what hits you. You're inspired, as we also just heard from Santa. I'd like to, because we, time is not our best ally, we have to conclude. Briefly, what do you think of um, the project and Italy and your relation with Italy? Quickly. The project is going to work out. It's going to be one of those projects that's going to bring out the art, uh, to promote artists in not only Uganda, but I'm glad it started in Uganda because being, being you, you be blessed when, when something starts in your country. So I'm very glad for Simona for thinking about this idea right here in Uganda. And of course, the Italian embassy for, for helping us because they, they provided the food when we are rehearsing, which is a good thing. So um, thank, uh, thank you for the, the embassy and everything. But I know that this project is going to be one that is going to be talked about for years to come. Um, <laughs> you know how to really be to summarize. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Simone, <He's> a master. <laughs> yeah. So thanks a lot for having us here, for giving us the opportunity of talking about uh, these projects. And uh, yes, the promise is that we can't tell you everything now, but watch out for 2012 because uh, you will hear about us. Mm. I I love time. Sometimes I hate time because there's this beautiful footage we had of uh, Averando's house, the museum. Mm. There's a lot of culture that we wanted to talk about. If you stay on the program, if you see footage about art in a beautiful house that is uh, uh, Averono's house, uh, he had issues with the museum, culture, and tourism. So maybe before I talk too much, I'll let him say something briefly. Mm. Yes, I love, uh, I love all the things. Uh, I love uh, preserving things. I believe that forgetting our past, uh, it is like losing our road. So in my house of God, paintings, artwork, as um, they were talking about. I like to promote art. I like to promote everything that has to do with a certain uh, peculiarity of the soul. And I like to preserve, for example, I've got old furniture and what and so forth. And about the museum, that is something that is really into my heart, I would like to say, please do not destroy the museum. <laughs> because the Museum <laughs> of Uganda is wonderful. It has been hosting uh, Mr. Mackinnon, uh, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, and it was a wonderful opportunity for Uganda to show to the world that such structure is peculiar, is interesting, so we have to defend it. Averano, where were you last week when uh, a <laughs> professor thought that uh, it's ugly? And uh, I needed you there. <laughs> and it, did, it wasn't by Africans. Yes, when he was saying those words, I wrote a sentence and I said, destroying means disregarding the deeds of the people before us. For that, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm on air, yes, <laughs> but you're in I love. relate with what you're saying. <laughs> I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't repeat the word. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I would like to thank everybody. You are a wonderful audience. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for following this program. We'll have footage. We'll have an interview immediately after this program. But I, w I want to thank Simona. I want to thank Salvador. I want to thank Pietro, Camelo. I want to remind people to go to Wuma Grounds and get that training for their business. The Italian Corporation for making this possible. All the technical crew, the camera people, Nora, Malco, Casozzi. Thank you very much for the good work. Even those I have not mentioned your names, I appreciate what you're doing. The technical crew, I'd like to wish you a lovely weekend. Santa, thank you for making me look so beautiful and uh, Jennifer Musisi of uh, Kampala City Authority thank you for one for the wonderful work of trying to clean Kampala try to get our roads to work especially when it rains it's a nightmare I suspect it's one of the reasons we couldn't have Santa on the program I hope that we don't have bad roads in future Muchala Jennifer Musisi I want to wish you a lovely weekend but don't go away we have a short interview from your woman have a lovely weekend brother Imran. Uh, this company's name is Yuma Builders Limited and it was started about uh, 25 years ago. Um, it's a family business so it was started by, by our parents. Um, so we've basically been in the, in the business of building materials for the last 20 years or so and we also do, um, we also do a property development. Uh, basically that's you know, we do uh, residential housing and, and commercial housing and warehouses. Uh, 
we are, we are one of the biggest importers of Italian materials. Uh, we import several containers of Italian tiles monthly. Um, so what we try to do in our showroom is, uh, is show customers the different possibilities, how you, can, how you can combine different items to get something interesting, you know, to get that, that Italian touch. On the whole, it's, we've, we've enjoyed a good relationship with Italy. That's why we continue to, to import materials from Italy, in spite of uh, you know, the relatively higher cost. But we found that it's in, this, in this market, it's always good to, you know, to have something that the customer knows you for. What we focus on is quality. So we're not just bringing tiles to, to, to Uganda, Italian tiles. We're bringing Italian design. You know, we, have, we are well traveled around the world because you know, in, our, in, in our line of business we have to, we have to explore different markets. You know, we, uh, there's, an emerging, there's an emerging Asian market, we have to look at, at that, those markets as well. But we've consistently, consistently found that um, Italian design is, is always a few steps ahead of anything else. Italian engineering, Italian design, so I would say we are we are ambassadors of, of Italy in Uganda.